Okay, when I have to explain uh, in class how we define globalization economics, I always like to present two opposing scenarios. In the first scenario, we have uh, countries in the world which are isolated, that is that they don't have, or they have very few relationship or interactions in terms of trade, in terms of investment, and opposed to this scenario, we present another scenario where the different economies in the world have melt into a single economy which is as integrated as a national market. That is, there's free movement of goods and services, there's free movement of factors of production, they speak the same language, they abide by the same laws, and they share the same currency. So, we have um, first a scenario where economies are isolated, second a scenario where the world economy is as integrated as a national market. Globalization is the process by which we move from the first scenario to the second scenario. And in this process, the closer we are to this final scenario, we say that we are more globalized. So, one of the classical questions here is uh, to what extent we have reached this final uh, uh, stage in which we are as globalized as a national economy, how close we are to this final stage. And if you travel around the world, uh, you have the perception that we are quite close to this uh, final stage of complete integration because, for example, you find the same uh, stores, the same Starbucks, the same McDonald's, the same Fara, inclusively, in, in, in different parts of the world. But look into the data, you still realize that uh, most or large part of the economic activity happens at very short distances. So still we are not so close to this final stage of globalization where as we said, the world economy would be as integrated as a national market. So we have to focus on what barriers preclude uh, the world economy to be as integrated as a national market. And among them, we have some classical explanations that are related with transport cost or with tariffs. But we have realized that uh, a large share of this reduction in trade due to distance is due to other uh, factors that are related with information, with information barriers. And therefore it's very important to develop the skills to overcome this, this information barriers if we want to have to achieve a higher level of integration. Okay, when we observe firms that uh, compete in international markets, when we uh, analyze firms that are successful in export, we realize that there are two set of factors that make these firms successful. Uh, the first set of factors have to do with the, some characteristics that are specific to the firm, uh, that would be, for example, the quality of management. But there is another set of factors that are related with country-specific variables. When we look to aggregate data, we realize that some countries are better exporting some goods, they have a higher share of world trade in those goods, whereas other countries have a uh, uh, comparative advantage or are better uh, producing other goods. And the forces that explain why some countries have a comparative advantage in some goods and why other countries have comparative advantage in other goods are explained in international economics. And we have to understand the variables and the forces that determine this comparative advantage if we want to uh, design a good international strategy for the firms. So the firms should take into account not only the distinctive features of these firms, but also the country-level characteristics in order to implement a successful international strategy. 